All right, everybody, welcome to the Dream Achievers weekly, almost weekly Zoom calls. So happy to see so many of you here. And we have a very special guest. She's on here twice, but <laughs> the real Julie is up in the corner. Um, Julie is our VP of Sales, and I'm going to professionally um, introduce her in a minute. But we're going to condense our Zoom call. It, it'll probably go over 30 minutes, but condensing means we're not going to do product knowledge and we're not going to do um, some of the other things. But I do want to welcome you all. I would like to hear two victories, and then I just have a couple really hot topics for announcements. Who would like to share? Let's show some excitement. I can go. She, she. She loves I have it. almost $4,000 in sales for June. Woo! Woo! And how did you do it? I had two fundraisers and one tasting and three online parties, I believe. A little bit of everything. Nice. Well, congratulations. That's a great way to end the um, end June. So cool. Thanks for sharing, Sheila. Anybody else? Okay, let me call on Lisa Burns. Lisa Burns has a big victory. Don't be so shy. What are, are you are you are you saying which one? I'm gonna say it has to do with the level on the incentive trip. Oh, that I earned level four of the trip. How about I earned level four on the incentive trip? That's a big deal, Lisa Burns. Congrats, Lisa. Thank you. Oh, that, yeah. is, that is fantastic. That is so very exciting. So congratulations on that. You are just too humble. Do you want to share just like in one minute, which I know is really hard, how you did it? A couple of just like little words. Yeah, what was your breakdown in points? Um, persistence it was my key. Um, I had 16 members reach $1,000 in sales. So I had 18,000 points from um, new team members and um, the rest in sales. No promotion points, but that's my goal for next year is to get some in that category too. Fantastic, Lisa. Did that answer your question, Sheila? Yeah, good job. Thank you for being so concise, Lisa, and congratulations. Okay, so just a couple reminders, and I know this is perhaps why there aren't as many on the call right now, but it's the end of the month, end of the quarter, the end of the incentive period. I know a lot of you out there are working hard to hit your numbers, so keep at it. Um, also remember the bingo, and Rebecca, thank you for sharing your bingo on the team page. That was great to see. Um, today's that Monday fun day. It's my favorite one that we've had so far just because this is one of my favorite products. So yeah. remember, you can order it as well. So only $5 for the Love and Love and Plus drink mix and $10 for the value pack. There's still time. Order today. Um, it ends, of course, today. But that's, that's a really 50% off. That's, that's thinking amazing. Um, also, as far as Party Palooza, in person, June 30th is the deadline for in person. So if you have anybody in your team that you think are, I think most of you are, are already going um, virtual too, but you don't have to have that done by June 30th. Um, all right. Well, let me introduce our groovy uh, guest person um, on the corner of my screen, Julie Cavanaugh, also known as Jewel. Yes. Um, is our vice president of marketing, and she has been with Tastely Simple for three years in July. That's fantastic, Julie. Yeah. Three That's years cool. in July. That's, the time goes fast. Yep. For sure. And I know, I know Julie lives in Alexandria with her family, hubby mm -hmm. Jesse, and you guys celebrated 30 years this month, huh, Julie? Yeah, we did. So. Congratulations. <laughs> You're not old enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> and they they have four children. I'm gonna read their names. Caden is 23. Is it Marin? Marin. Like Marin. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Marin, beautiful name. 21, Carson, 14, and Hudson, 12. I love their names. <laughs> we, we asked her, what is your favorite taste like simple product? And she said, How do I pick? <laughs> um, but she did say garlic, garlic, CC cilantro, and absolutely almond pound cake. Yum. Mm -hmm. And here's a fun fact um, about 
Julie. She said, I co-presented with Bill Gates in front of 50,000 plus people in, how do you say that, Safeco Field? Yep, yep, in Safeco. Seattle. In Seattle. I think we all have heard of Bill Gates. Yes. Yeah. Did you like him, Julie? So he is a very interesting individual. Um, and uh, it's, he's very intense. <laughs> and the way that I kind of put the stress off is I was doing a demonstration of a new e-commerce system that Microsoft was coming out with. Okay. And, you know, he and I were going to co-announce that. And so I was doing the demo. And for the demo, I had a Bill Gates bobblehead doll made that was the product that I was going to be selling in the e-commerce store. So humor is always my way to <laughs> make things a little less stressful. And it went I good. love it, Julie. So Julie is going to talk about Amy, our much anticipated presentation. And I'm just so thankful that Julie is a part of Tastefully Simple and she's very smart, um, very fun, and she's making it happen. So um, Julie, I'm going to let you take it away and however you want to, if you want to have questions during or after, it's your, the ball yeah. is in your field, my friend. Okay. Well, a, a question is what I would like to start with, and that's to understand how many of you are using Amy in some way, whether you've dabbled with it um, or are regularly using it. Okay. So we've got a few of you and others uh, not quite there yet, and that's totally fine. And so I wanted to share some just hot off the press data about Amy users, uh, tastefully simple Amy users. And so our finance team looked over the past um, you know, year so far of Amy use users since January through May, the end of May. And what we found is that on average, <laughs> we were seeing high triple digit increases uh, in monthly sales between those that used Amy and those who did not. So, um, you know, for instance, at the consultant level, um, we saw an average of 143% increase in sales um, over that time period among uh, consultant level users. And even at the highest ranks, um, which uh, in a company that I was at in the past that used Amy, we saw a little bit lower um, numbers and those because so many, you know, top leaders have established systems, right? So, um, you know, that, that was a little bit of a hypothesis, but um, we saw a little bit of that, but still on average, um, you know, we were seeing between for gold and diamond, gold through diamond and up, we were seeing 95 to 120% on average higher sales month over month. So that's Amy versus non-Amy users over that time period. You can't draw a complete like, well, this is all because of Amy, right? There's a lot of factors that go into that. So what we also did was look at the same people, the Amy people year over year. And so looked at how they did in the same time period, January through May of 2021, versus January through May of 2022. And what we found there, again, was very similar types of uh, results, not in triple digits at this time, but what we're seeing is, um, you know, much higher productivity, you know, overall among people, you know, kind of beating their own goals. And think about this, this is January through May of 2022, which has been, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more challenging time for some of us. So Amy was really able to provide that consistency, um, you know, to provide some results in that time period. So I just wanted to share that for those of you that may not be using it, may not be sure if you want to use it, um, that it can be a big impact for you uh, if you are interested in it. So that's stats. Um, before I move on, you know, um, are there any questions? I got some questions that um, Sherry was great enough to gather from your group um, and share with me. So I do plan on hitting all of those, you know, during the, the amount of time that I can have here, Sherry. Um, but are there any questions that aren't on the list that might have also come to your mind? All right. 
just want to make sure there's time for, for more questions or there's an opportunity for more to come out. So I'm going to uh, walk you through this with the opportunity for you to ask questions as we go. And Sherry, um, how much time do we have? Just so that I make sure that I'm on track for you and your team and what remaining time you need. Well, right. Um, well, normally it's a half hour, but we said we would extend that. So it's up to you, Julie. Um, okay. What are you thinking? How long do you think? I think it might be about 25 minutes unless there's so, you know, time Perfect. for more questions. So Perfect. I think Perfect. we should do that. Sounds great. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to start off with just the question about, you know, hey, how can I leverage the dashboard? Um, and, you know, really use the features in that. Does that uh, work for all of you? I'm also, I need to bring up your question list here real quick. So bear with me so that I still have that. Okay, so you know, Stephanie, how to utilize the Amy dashboard options. So you can see here, I'm in uh, my dashboard. And uh, you know, one thing to kind of note about this is that this is really your place to see how your activity with Amy is doing overall. So if you, you know, are, are using Amy because we have the integration, it's showing you uh, your total sales. So that's a main uh, piece that you can look at here. Up across the top, there's also some things that you can look at. So for instance, you can see what samples you've sent out. I clicked on the samples link. Um, you can look at the orders that have been completed. Um, and if you don't know, Fiona Fair Client is your, your leader's uh, not uh, other name that I use. So that's a little piece of <laughs> trivia. If you see a demo and I'm doing something with Fiona Fair Client, it's actually Sherry that I'm bugging. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, Julie, um, I'm going to be real honest. I use it, but I don't use it to the extent that I should. So this is going to sound like, are you kidding me? You don't know this, but I thought others might have the same. Sure. I just pulled mine up on my phone and I'm wondering if the rest of you are hopefully doing the same because why not? Um, you can use your desktop, but obviously a lot of people do it on the phone. But I noticed it has Julie, my personal sales and it says zero new contacts. Doesn't it download like automatically? It does download contacts on a nightly basis. So it's going to look between the prior day and the current day to see if oh it's I was like for the month i know I, <laughs> yeah. but it's just for our 24 hour period yeah and Got so it. the total sales are total sales new contacts um come in there a little bit more uh you know as we go and then your um, to do's completed are cumulative your messages sent are cumulative and then you can see your storefront. And I know there was a question that um, Lisa had about the storefront and we'll get to that a little bit later. So across the top, really what those are is kind of shortcut links to you know, common things that you might be wanting to keep track of in terms of sample set, orders received, um, shares that you've done. And then for those of you utilizing the storefront and the collections, there's metrics for that as well. And we'll go into that in just a moment. So Stephanie, does that make sense? Or are there things on it that on the dashboard that have caused you a question or? So I've never used samples up on the top next to, mm -hmm. can you elaborate that? Yeah, so what, what you can do is when you, let's imagine, and I'm, I'll use my uh, <laughs> fearless Fiona uh, to do this. Let's say that you have a client that um, you provided a sample to. And so if you see the big green circle down in the bottom right, and I choose the plus button, you come up with four different options that you can do with Fiona. You can record an order, the green price tag, you know, says record a sample. Then there's record a note, which gets to a question that one of the rest of you had during that time period, and you can create wish lists for them. So if I choose record a sample, what it will allow me to do is, um, since we talked about love and love and slush at the top of this, let's imagine, although maybe you wouldn't be giving out a sample of that, I don't know, but um, let's imagine that you did. 
And so up at the top right, I've got my one product selected as a sample that I provided and I choose complete. And so I can see that the sample date is June 27th and I can either confirm that sample or I can edit it and it shows me which product was provided as a sample. So if I choose confirm sample, then you'll notice um, that a custom uh, follow-up is going to be scheduled for that. Um, so I can see, and actually in this case, sorry, I lied about that one. It will create a follow-up for this, but it's not a custom follow-up. So you'll have a, a link that will, you know, you'll get a to-do to follow up on a sample sent. Okay, so that will pop up later in your to-dos. Does that make sense? Julie, can you talk about the parties at the top? I've never seen that and I've never used that. Yeah, and so that is an integration. Great question, Lisa. And it's an integration that we don't have enabled um, with Amy at this time. We're always looking at those you know, new features and seeing what we can pull off, but it's really not something we have enabled at this time. The other set of functionality that we will be looking at um, probably before even that is the ability for you to do more with your own teams. So there's functionality that is uh, scheduled to come out that allows you to do even more with existing team members because it will the integration between your team's genealogy will be available to Amy. And so that's something that we'll be looking at in the future to determine if we can schedule that integration. Um, because there's a lot of power in having to do's related to your team members as well, you know, to help with follow up or help with um, topics, you know, you've talked about or goals that they might have. Julie, this is Barbara O'Byrne. Can you search samples the same way? So like if you've sent out samples for beer bread, could you uh, find all the people that you sent a sample for beer bread and tell them of a upcoming sale? Yeah. Or do you have? Let, let's try it, shall we? Okay, so um, here's one mistake that I think a lot of people I've seen um, make when it comes to some of these sample types of things or products purchased is they type the product name in the name telephone or email field and that's actually not where you put in the search term so you choose filter so that was below the main search field and then you see one of the choices i have is product sampled so when i start typing in lovin and then i choose apply up at the top then I have to choose apply one more time. And that gets to your question, Barb. I chose love and lemon kind of for another purpose, right? <laughs> to get to your example. And then you choose apply again. What, do I wish it were not a couple of extra clicks? Yes, <laughs> but that is the way you do it. So then I can see Fiona was provided a sample of love and lemon. Okay, so follow, piggyback to that same scenario because that was another question I had that actually is on your list. Mm -hmm. I was searching and I went to the right place, product um, purchased, mm -hmm. and I put lovin' lemon slush drink mix in for my product. And mm -hmm. I got everybody that bought anything with the word lemon in it, anybody that had something with the word drink in it. So I got everybody from the, <laughs> the caramel drink to, I mean, every drink mix mm -hmm. came up. Yeah. And so you will find that um, to be the case. So, you know, if we've got a product that has a lot of different uses of the same word, um, you will find that to be the case. So if I enter in lovin' lemon, I want to try something once. Lovin' lemon, if I put it in quotes, what will happen? So since you have more clients, do you have your phone up right now? Yeah. Can you try it with quotes? Sure. I'll get back to you. Okay. Um, so that is, you know, something to be aware of is that some of our products like garlic would be another one, right? Where we have the word garlic in a number of them. Um, and so that's one that we could probably play around with to see if there's a way um, to manage that a little bit more. 
It's a great question though, Barb. Okay. Uh, questions on what I've shown so far that are coming to mind for you. I have a question. Yeah. So I have not been able to use Amy on my desktop as much as I would like because the way it looks on my phone is completely different than my desktop. Yeah. So is that how it's supposed to be from the it way you're Okay. Yeah. Maybe desktop is really prioritized for you doing a few things, importing contacts and managing message templates in a way where it's easier for you to type out and change all of your message templates. That's really what the purpose of it is because they know that it's easier to do those things at a desktop. Um, and so their focus on actual the day to day functionalities in the app on the management of your contacts and messages in the desktop. Um, portal. Okay, thank you. I thought maybe I was in the wrong spot. No. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, Lisa, you had a great couple of questions here about using the contact form. And before we go right into events and Square, um, I want to just back up the truck a little bit and talk about contacts at a little bit higher level. Um, before we get in there. Does that sound okay? All right, so we're going to look for our Fiona again. And I just kind of want to walk through some things about a contact record that are important for you to know about. And probably um, the thing that I think is uh, something that people might underutilize initially is, do you see right below Fiona's name, you see client, VIP, farmer's market, those are labels that you can add to make it easier to find someone. So let's say that not only did I meet Fiona at the farmer's market, she also went to the um, grape stomp uh, 2021, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna add that label and I'm gonna see then below her name, another label that I can add. So that makes it again, easier for you to find everybody that attended an event. It could help you find everybody that's in your VIP group. Um, you know, Some of the basic ones that are there for you without you even having to add anything is whether they're a client or client prospect, whether they might be a consultant on your team, whether they're a prospect, um, host prospect, host, um, or even, you know, somebody maybe that, um, you know, you, you want to do something a little bit different with. It could be, you know, I've seen people use them for parties, right, in terms of where you met that person, if you've had enough attendees, there's just, you know, it, it's your mind and thinking through what you would most like to use as labels. Um, they provided you with some of the basics. What I would say is, um, you know, think about what's reasonable for you to maintain when it comes to those labels, because you don't want a system that ends up being something that's so much overhead that you don't want to do it, right? The idea of all of this is something that you can do in 10 minutes a day. And even if you don't do everything that you want to do in 10 minutes a day, you've still made progress, right? So think about keeping things simple. When you go down then to the next level of this, um, and I'm type too fast and lose my Fiona. Um, in the record, you know, I can look at here and um, see a number of different things. So I, when I originally set her up, um, I have all of her basic information that's available. So if I know her Facebook, I know her Instagram, any address information, all of that can be added um, to her profile. And then I also have, you know, if I've got the phone number and it's a mobile phone number, I can text and call. So if I want to text Fiona um, there, I just sent Fiona a message. What's bringing you joy? And Sherry should have received that. I did. Yeah. So it's that quick and easy, um, you know, to text somebody within Amy. Um, I could choose to call Sherry, which I won't this time. Um, so you can just have a wide variety of ways to reach out. And something that I want to address, um, Barbara, you mentioned 
um, too many texts are going out to each customer. Amy does nothing without you taking the action. So, you know, really controlling how many texts are going out to your clients are really a matter that's fully within your control because Amy doesn't send anything without you actually taking action to do it. So if somebody is telling you they're getting too many texts, you know, you might want to ask a little bit more about what texts they're referring to because there's no automated text from Amy. So that probably is helpful to know. Yeah, one of the one of the problems I, I finally came up to the answer with is Amy is set up for to to remind you when you're trying to work through your to do's. You don't always see you get a list of to's you don't until you click on the person you don't see when was the last time you contacted them. It just mm -hmm. their name comes up. So you almost have to open every single one first to see whether or not they've you contacted them recently. Yeah, so it's always you know, a good idea to look over that contact record like you can see here, um, you know, seeing the different um, contacts that I've had uh, with Fiona over the last couple of years, right? So looking at that and making sure uh, that you have that. So the top zone um, was about, you know, just kind of who is she? I can also narrow this down. Um, in the timeline, you can choose viewing and then choose what you want to see in activity. You can either see everything like we're looking at right now um, or to our discussion about samples, for instance, then I can just see the samples that I've sent her and when I sent her those samples. Um, or I could look at orders and see what she's ordered and when if I wanted to narrow it down and this is somebody I've had you know a lot of uh, interaction with over the time. So finally um, at the bottom here is really you know kind of the heart of what you'll do on a daily basis in terms of you know maybe things that you want to uh, take action on. Recording an order if you have if the order has been placed through your personal website, or through my HQ, those are going to come in on a nightly basis. So you don't have to record an order that was already done in one of those two systems. The recording an order is um, really great for porch pickups, events, all of those pieces. And I'm going to try to answer Lisa your question about the contact form and the sales in uh, you know and in, in doing Square through the course of this. So let's say for instance. Um, uh, Fiona visits my booth um, at a fair and she places an order. So let's say she does the three in one burger press and we'll do bacon, bacon and some bacon pepper jam. So I've selected those. I can see now the little plus sign is turned into a, a blue check mark. And I can confirm which products, if I want to make sure that I've gotten the ones that I want, in case it's a, a large order that just kind of makes it easy to see just the ones I've selected. And I can choose complete. Now at this time, I can see, you know, what the total amount is going to be, what's going to be the, the total or, you know, the amounts of quantities, et cetera. I can change that. Let's say she wants a couple of bacon pepper jam. And then I can just choose record order, or if I have a method of payment um, hooked up and set up in Amy, which I'll show you the backside of that in a moment, I can choose check out that green little receipt icon. And so up across the top, I can record a payment, which would just be um, the record of cash received, for instance. I can choose charge card, and that would be your integration with full on square point of sale if you've got the card reader um, and you're going to an event for that. Or I can choose send invoice, which will say you don't have square with uh, point of service. Maybe you have Venmo and you, know, you want to send them that little invoice, then that's gonna be another way that you could do it. So if I choose record payment, um, this is just mine to say I was paid with one of these methods. I haven't, you know, integrated it. I can just choose that. If I want to choose charge card, now what you see then is that connection with Square POS right on my, you know, phone as well. So it gives me the total amount um, that I need to do. I can split the amount, you know, as you would on anything. You can use a card on file. You can do manual card entry. This is all now in the Square app. 
and you're not in the Amy app. Does that make sense? Now, what it won't do is there is no integration on inventory, Lisa, between Square and Amy. So it's not going to decrement a you know inventory amount um, in Amy and have that be aware. Square is your system of record for what your inventory on hand is. I am sure Amy gets a lot of requests for that. I'm also equally sure that um, sometimes they don't want to get into that business because that puts them in the space of being a company that is managing personally identifiable information and PCI compliance information. And so those and PCI means like keeping your credit card information safe. There's a bunch of rules and regulations around that that Amy may or may not want to get into, you know, at some point. So does that make sense on that type of connection if you have a square point of sale card reader, how you would do that? It does. I was looking for the inventory control okay. part of it. Okay. Um, yeah, so that would still be tracked in there. Um, and then if you don't have a point of sale um, you know, uh, system, at this point, then I can send that invoice and so you're seeing here, um, you know, the link to where I can go pay. And if I send this to Sherry, she's going to be able to click on that link. She's going to be able to choose any of the payment methods that I have set up in Amy. So where do you set up payment methods in Amy? The little cog down in the bottom right called account is where you go in to set up a lot of different little things that can make Amy work smoother for you. And so if I go into this um, item under settings called configure invoices, which is underneath the fourth one down under settings, I can choose configure uh, accounts, which is my payment methods that I'll accept, and I can configure sales tax. So that way you're sure that you're always collecting the right amount of sales tax uh, for where you are. And I can configure those payment accounts. So social payments are where you don't have a card reader. You don't have a point of sale system involved. It's just, you know, Venmo me, PayPal me, you know, Cash App or Square, just traditional Square without the point of sale. So when you go into one of these, you just set up what your, um, you know, enter what your name is for Venmo, for instance. And then if you were new to this, like my, I'm already verified here, but if I choose verify account, then that little, you know, when you see in so many apps where it says, do I have your permission, you know, to share data between these two apps, you say yes, and then you go on forward from that. And you can add as many of those that you are willing to accept. On the point of sale, it's truly down to Square and PayPal here, the two point of sale systems that are most commonly used um, probably out there. Is there anyone using a point of sale system that's not, not one of these two? Okay. All right. Julie, so, I'm wondering, oh, can I ask you a quick question? Sorry. Yeah. Does anybody here on the call use the contact form on um, Amy for events or parties? Angie, you do? You're on mute. I used it once. I did a live and I had them sign up with it for prizes. Okay. Yeah. Did it work? Did you mm -hmm. like it? Yeah, it worked pretty good. I just had a hard time finding them after that. Okay. So that would be where you take the time to make a label, mm -hmm. you know, in that scenario. And then and how would you do it? Like I wanted to, at the end of the live, I wanted to just go find them. So I'd have the list and I wasn't sure where they were. Yeah, so a couple of ways that you could do that is by, um, you know, last contacted, there's some different oh, sure. in here. Um, and then another, you know, honestly, another way that you could do it is, um, you know, if there's any other, um, I'm trying to think, there's another way that I saw someone do this recently that was something I hadn't seen before. Um, so if it's a live event, right, if, if they're all, let's say, um, this might be a little bit different example, but let's say in this case, you're trying to find everybody that went to an event last year and you know the event was in Fergus Falls, right? So in this case, you could search by that zip code and find everybody in Fergus Falls. 
It's another thing to consider, and I'll find some links to send after this about how you could use the desktop portal to potentially aid you with that scenario. I need to go try something out in that, Angie. So I'm just gonna make a note because that there might be a little bit easier method for the scenario that you had there by using the desktop portal. Okay. And so, is there a way to change that contact form of what we ask? Uh, here, I'm gonna go in and show, let me just make a note real quick. Contact labeling. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to that little cog down on the bottom right that says account and then go up to the contact form. And um, yeah, there is not at this time a way to change what fields are in the contact form. But what you can know is that that contact form, these fields are not required. So if you get somebody saying, I don't want to give you that information or, you know, I just want to give you my email or just give you my phone number. It's not going to stop them from filling out that form. So, you know, that's something that um, is good to know too. It is something that um, I know Amy team has been requested, <laughs> um, you know, to, to do that. Because even one of the ways that I think about it is there was a drop down for me to put certain kinds of labels. Like mm -hmm. I met you at the Fergus art fair or whatever. Um, that would be really helpful. There's some other things that would be helpful, I think, in this. So what a lot of people will do at an event, um, and your mileage may vary, your willingness to do this um, may or may not vary, is get a cheap tablet that you put in a, like a, just a regular, like, you know, some kind of Android tablet that you put in a big, huge case, <laughs> like one of those kid cases that's hard to walk off with, and, you know, it's like 60 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever. And then you're asking people to, you know, fill out this form while you're tallying up, just kind of, you know, getting all their products gathered and put together. And so then by the time they've completed that form, you can pick them up and record the order. So they're in your Amy system. You can go through and record all the products and you can either, you know, do that on-site um, transaction or send an invoice or just take the cash and record the order. So that can be a really streamlined way if you are big into events to have a little cheap tablet that is, you know, maybe um, put in one of those very child protection sort of cases. <laughs> um, so that's something to think about as well. Okay, um, I just wanna make sure I'm looking through some of these questions and I know we're we're already up against time. Um, so the last uh, a couple questions Twyla you asked how do we spend special offers to a group of clients? You don't um, because the whole point of Amy is one-to-one -one connection and client care. Um, there are other apps available you know for group texting and those types of things if you want to reach out to multiple clients but Amy has a very firm stance on, the best client care is delivered one-to-one -one, and people like to feel special and that's kind of their approach. And I think it's partially why people that use it are very successful because it feels personal. Um, so, but if you're doing marketing, right, this is more about client care. If you want to do marketing out to multiple people, um, you know, I'm sure Sherry can offer maybe some suggestions or I can get back to you guys with other ones um, that you might find useful if you want to do that kind of thing. Does that help? Yeah, I was just wondering if there was a way, because I do, I mean, I do my Amy's every day, and I just thought when this, like these specials came out, it would have been nice to be able to, you know, send out a group of them instead of just yeah. my 377 contacts have to contact each one. So that's yeah. all. And, yeah, and those are probably, you know, that's more better served in the marketing arm of things. Um, but it would be nice to know that you sent out that special to them. So I totally get why you'd want to. And if they expand their scope into more marketing, I'm sure that will be an area. I get to see the list of all the feature requests behind the scenes of what people are asking for. And it's certainly there, but thus far they've taken a pretty um, strict line around saying that they're you know, all about one-to-one. -one. 
Um, so then there was a question about uh, the storefront and why would you use that instead of sending somebody um, you know, directly to your website? And here's what I will tell you about that is you guys know your website like the back of your hand, right? Because you use it, you explore it. And guess what happens with users that are new? No matter how well, um, you know, any site that has more than a few products leaves lots of different directions. And this is Julie with a user experience design hat on, right? Telling you it leaves lots of different directions for the people you send to your website to go. And when people have too many choices, they can tend to shut down or decide that they don't wanna get into it. The storefront is a way to ease them into your website. So when you look at your web, your storefront, it's really your, um, you know, kind of introductory page. If you use Linktree or if you use Milkshake or any of those tools on your Instagram page, um, this is very similar, but it's on steroids because it's already directly connected with your website and has a little more functionality. So I'm going to show you mine, which I need to update. Um, but, you know, in this case, this is a, you know, my older one here, but you can do a couple of different things on your storefront. You can create a collection um, and a collection could be a theme. You know, you could have the client special on there. Um, you know, if you want all of your monthly specials, you could have a collection for June monthly specials, right? You could have a theme around, you know, this is an example of it's summer camping time. What products go great with summer camping? Um, you know, and what might I want to look at for that? Um, then you can do things like um, some people will do things for a fundraiser where um, they're really trying to promote. Maybe it's a seasonings based fundraiser where they're trying to keep it simple and say, just pick from our seasonings, right? You can have that page just list just the seasonings. And when they get to um, you know, let's say, for instance, it was everyday grill in seasoning. Um, you know, when you uh, get to that now, in this case, that product is no longer available because my list is old. So what it does is a really cool thing um, to say that, hey, you know, it's not not available right now, but leave your information and I can get back with you. So it's an opportunity for a conversation. You can also do this for LTO pre-orders. So once you get your hands on knowing what the LTO for the next month is, you can use this as a way to pre-promote and collect orders for the LTO um, so that you can do that, uh, you know, kind of going forward. Now let's, let's pick our standard product. In this case now, once I click on this, it's going right over, you know, I've set up to somebody else's site just to kind of show you that it is actually coming to a consultant site. But at this point, you know, I am going directly to that Bayou Bourbon page. And if that's really what I want to do, that's my starting place. Then I can branch out and explore. So why I like that storefront is, number one, it provides you know, less friction in the path for your clients. And number two, you get dashboard views, right? So here you kind of get a sense of you know, people viewing your storefront, how many people have looked at links, you can see, you know, from that collection standpoint, um, hey, there's eight items in there. There were 21 visits and 28 products clicked. So you kind of get a sense of what's going on with it, which maybe some of you are like, yeah, that's more than I want to know. But it is another reason to use the storefront. So um, that is another um, little, little known sort of use of the storefront. And to me, it's really about keeping things front and center, you know. With Facebook changing a lot in terms of its viability, um, this looks so Instagram-like and you can include the link right in your Instagram bio, just like you would a link tree or a milkshake link, you know, for, for that site. It's a really easy way to just kind of transition them from Instagram into purchasing products that you've kind of targeted. Um, so that's an idea there. I think that was the last, oh, saving notes about customers and how to search for them later. Um, <clears throat> so let's do that filter and I choose notes and 
let's say that um, my problem is I probably haven't set this up perfectly, but let's say that in the note somewhere there's grape and I want to apply. Now in this case, there's nothing great, you know, in my notes, but if I were to, let's, let's do this a little bit differently and say, okay, let's go to Fiona again. Oh, shoot, sorry, hold on, let me reset my filters. And let's say that I do want to add a note and say, Fiona loves anything grape flavored. I don't know, it's coming up with some there. Then I have the opportunity to either save and create a custom follow-up, so something to follow up with her on, or it's just a note and it's just something that I want to know and be able to look for. Choose save without a follow-up. And then when I do that search that we looked at before, I go into filter, I choose notes, and I choose grape, click apply, and apply one more time, and it finds uh, Fiona. And I can look at that note, Fiona loves anything grape flavored. So okay. and if I was like, hey, you know, I've got a lot of stuff in here, well, then I'd narrow it down to notes so that I would just see what's in the notes. Thanks, that was my question. This is Barb again. Um, just real quick, um, if you put something in quotes like love and lemon, yeah. it yeah. still brings up everything lemon. Um, you've got to try to find that one word that isn't going to have 17 million hits. Yeah. So uh, garlic, garlic gave me out of my 300 and some odd customers, it gave me 200 and some odd hits. Okay. So, so I would think the same thing's going to happen in notes, the same thing if, if it's not something unique. Yeah. So that's something I'll log with the Amy team to see. I'll either look through the, you know, and that's another thing that um, I really highly recommend if you're not in the Amy group and you're interested in getting going more, definitely um, look to join the Amy group which I can send information, actually it's right here. If you go into resource hub, the sell with Amy Facebook page is listed there. And then the help portal I found in general to be quite helpful. Um, and so I don't know if we'd find anything around search um, that would get us to that, but I will reach out to our contact to find out if there's any little hints or tips um, that we might be able to, to um, offer. So Julie, where did you find the resource hub? I don't know if I'm... Oh, sorry. Um, so you go back down to that little cog on account and then up on the top, there's eight buttons at the top. Yeah. Oh, there so, you go. Yeah, Thank the you. resource hub is right there. On these four, I will also uh, mention to you um, that this is where you're going to find some of your other most common things. So being able to you know, manage how often, you know, when, when do you want to get reminders to review to do's? Um, what time frames do you want to use for connecting with your customers? Um, you know, how many prompts that you want to reach out to? This is all stuff that you can change in here based on your own preferences of how you manage client care. Um, and so that's something to definitely check out. These message templates, you know, uh, Amy puts these messages in place, but you can do whatever you want in these messages. You can put links in them. You can, um, you know, change any of those, those aspects of it. So you can go in and change all of these different message templates. I personally would go into the desktop portal because I'd rather type on a keyboard. <laughs> then try to change them on my phone unless it's a real quick change. Um, but, you know, you want to make those sound like you and, you know, feel authentic to you and how your clients would expect you to be speaking to them. You know, whether that's, you know, using emojis, if they know you're an emoji person, you know, throw some emojis in there. If your tone is more formal, more casual, whatever would, would be to um, make it seem most like it fits your vibe. All right. And you've seen the whole epic battle waging behind me of the puppy bedtime battle. So <laughs> <laughs> working from home, right? You never know. I, I love it. I love it. Oh, that's so funny. They are moving around, aren't they? 
Yeah, they are. They're two border, two Aussies, and they love to play. So, Julie, is there anywhere that you share like best practices? Like, what's the best time to send texts? Um, Mm -hmm. What's the what are other people sending out to get orders? Because I like Amy mostly for booking parties is what I've been using it for. I don't have see that huge bump in sales, so I would love to know. I hear other people saying that. I would love to know maybe some ways to do that. How are they getting those reorders? You know, kind of like some best practices. I'd love to have more. I would 100% encourage you to join that Sell with Amy Facebook group. Yeah, I've been on it. I'm on it. Yeah. So that's where they're, you know, you're seeing what other people are doing that's working. That might be a twist than you've thought of. The other thing is I'm trying to uh, arrange a situation where the folks from Amy would come to Party Palooza. Okay. Um, to be able to have kind of a, a desk there for you to ask mm-hmm. questions and get best practices. Um, ironically, the woman that would probably come used to work for me at my last company. So I find it so funny that we'd get to have time together again in a completely yeah. different way. I so just didn't know if that's some training. Maybe I'm sure yeah. if I need it, other people do. And yeah. that Tastely really Simple could offer. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So was this helpful or was it overwhelming? Do you need me? Because I'd like to send out some links after the fact, because obviously in 25 minutes, I'm going through like seven or eight different complete functions. And I can send out a link to the help topics behind that. So you can read it in more detail if you're a reader and try it on your own. Um, If that would be helpful, I'll send them to Sherry. Definitely. All right. For sure. Great. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure to join you all. And I hope I gave you a few ideas or, or um, cleared up a question or two. You did, Julie. Thank <laughs> you so much. We'll look forward sure. to whatever you send me and I'll share it on the team page. So thank you. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks for the opportunity to come chat. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Julie. And Julie, will you get unshare that screen so I or it doesn't matter. I can just turn on, but it doesn't matter at all.